Next, let's move on and create some plan sheets. We're going to do this in a separate file, which is usually a good practice, is to create your plan sheets in separate files from your cross-section sheets, although it's not required. You can choose to put all the data in one file if you want, or it's a better practice typically to segregate that data or federate that data out into separate files. Now the file that I'm in here is nothing other than a blank file that's got a bunch of data referenced into it, just like we saw before. So all of this data that's coming in is coming through a reference. Uh, there's nothing actually in this file, and that's a good way to typically work. On a real small project, if you're the only one working on it, you only have a couple things, you might want to include it all in one file. But typically, you're going to want to be able to federate the data out into separate files, so different people can be working in different files at diff in uh, different areas of the projects or at different points in time. So we're going to work in that fashion. Now to create the plan sheets, it's going to be very similar to what we did with cross-section sheets. We'll go to our Drawing Production tab, select our Name Boundary tool, and then we select the appropriate mode. So I'll put it in Plan Mode, select the drawing seed that I want to use. We deliver three drawing seeds in the default workspaces, one for plan sheets, for double plan sheets, and for plan and profile sheets. So we'll start with just our simple plan. Pick our geometry that we want to follow. And as soon as I do that, it provides the name of that geometry and puts that in here. That works just like we saw with cross sections. That's the name of the group that's going to hold together all these name boundaries. I can adjust that name if I want. Maybe I want it to become a little more specific here and actually call that plan sheets. I could do that. There's our typo there. And we define where the starting and ending locations of that sheet are going to be at. I'm going to start it right here. And where's my ending position of the sheet's going to be at, ending station. Now these sheets look a little bit large, so I'm going to go ahead and downsize them a little bit and maybe make them a 20 scale instead of a 50. So that looks a little bit better. I also, I'm going to adjust the, the sheet name that's going to get created for my sheet here. Uh, I want these to start out and be called plan with a 1 on it, and that will automatically increment it to plan 2, plan 3, plan 4, etc. as it builds each of these sheets here. I can go ahead and create the drawings. As I process these, I can leave the show dialog on if I want, and it'll create, it'll bring up that extra dialog. I can verify those additional settings before I continue on. So we'll go ahead and pick, go out to that area right there. We'll data point to accept that and let them create. Because I had show dialog on, it went ahead and opened up this dialog, which is showing me where it's going to build the drawing models at and scale it, how it's going to annotate them, and the same thing with the sheet models. Now there's one other option that's on here that I want to introduce now called Add to Sheet Index. We'll talk about the sheet index in a later segment of this course. For right now, I'm just going to toggle this on. And we'll see what that actually did here in a couple more sections in this course. I'll click OK to create the plan sheets. It'll process them. And we'll see that last plan sheet. Remember, it always opens the last sheet is where it's going to leave you out. At. So here's my final plan sheet. I could jump back to any of my other sheets. We'll jump back to sheet number one. There's the layout of it. It's put the sheet border on it as we expect. It works exactly the same way that we saw with cross-sections. The reference was actually clipped into a drawing file. So here's the drawing file for that. We could add additional annotations here or provide annotations. The, the annotation I have here actually came directly through from my reference. I already had my data annotated. Um, and then that is referenced into the plan sheet. Well, you might think, okay, that's a lot of work for just that simple bit of data, but that's because we only have a single item on our plan sheet right now, just a single plan. Once we get multiple plans on there or plans and profiles, it'll make a little bit more sense why we go through that drawing file and then allow you to position those on the sheet. So let's go back and take a look at that. Let's do a double plan. So I'll go back to my two-dimensional view or my main drawing view here. And let's lay out another set of sheets. We'll just do them in this same file. Plan mode. 
I'm going to use a different seed file this time. I'm going to use the plan plan seed file. And we'll pick the geometry we want to follow from the beginning to the end. Well, let's adjust our scale and just match these. So we'll set these to 20 scale again. Notice that the sheets are the same length because the scale matches, but these are skinnier. They have less width to them. That's because we've set this up to be less wide. If we're going to be able to fit two sheets on a single plan sheet, we can't have quite as much width to them. So we can pick those. We can identify the group name that we want to put these in, as well as the name of the sheets themselves. So let's call this group double plan. And I'm going to go ahead and change the names here. We'll call those D plan, just for something a little different here. And we'll see all that in our name boundary manager here in a moment. Now this time, just to show you how this works, if I turn off Show Dialog, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off and click OK to create the drawing. And notice that it's immediately gone into creating those plan sheets. That extra dialog never popped up. Here's the end result. I've got some sheets created here. They are named as I asked them to be, D plan 1 through 8. There's the sheet models as well as, or excuse me, the drawing models as well as the sheet models that were created. Now notice I have eight drawing models, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, but I only have four sheet models, one, three, five, and seven. That's because each sheet model has multiple drawings on it. Now you may end up in a situation where we've got some overlap between the two. We have that here on sheet number one. This is all just reference data, so I could easily come in here, grab a reference file, say I want to move that reference file, and just move it down a little bit to adjust that sheet to clean up our overlap there. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.